When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem, and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem, and crown him Thanks for singing with me. Well, let's talk about Peter for a couple minutes. You may remember that Peter denied Jesus not once, not twice, but three times. And he denied him, Peter denied him, when Jesus needed him the most, right? Yeah. Jesus had been arrested. And he was on trial, and he really needed Peter and the other disciples to stand by him. But did they stand by Jesus? Oh, no. No. Went to sleep. They went to sleep. <laughs> Judas betrayed Jesus with a what? Kiss. With a kiss. With a kiss. And when Jesus was on trial, and someone said to Peter, Oh, you know Jesus, don't you? You know that guy that's on trial? He said, Peter. I never met him. Never met the man, and he cursed. He not only said, I don't know the man, he, he used uh, colorful language, which I will not use in church. <laughs> because it's church, you know. Thank you. But you're welcome. But Peter, but Peter denied Jesus vehemently. He denied him with curses. So Jesus, after being on trial, he saw Peter, Jesus saw Peter, didn't say a thing to him, didn't say a thing to Peter. He just looked at him. Huh? He looked at him, and what did Peter do? He wept bitterly, because he realized that he had denied his Lord at the most critical time. He had denied his Lord when Jesus needed him the most. So, after the crucifixion, Peter went back to the only thing he knew, and that was fishing. And Jesus comes to Peter after his resurrection. He's risen from the dead now, and Jesus comes directly to Peter, and he says, Peter, do you love me? By the way, that's the title of the sermon, you'll notice. The title of the sermon today is, Do You Love Me? So Jesus comes to Peter and he says, Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus says, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. So the good news here for Peter is that Jesus has a job for him to do. Jesus has for 
forgiven Peter of his denial. Isn't that good news? Oh, yeah. Isn't that good news? And he's got something for Peter to do. Thanks be to God. So a second time, Jesus says to Peter, Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. And again, Jesus says to Peter, I want you to do something. I got something for you to do. Feed my lamb, feed my sheep. But he had to ask him a third time, right? Peter, do you love me? And it says in the scripture that Peter was hurt when he was asked the third time, probably remembering, right? Probably remembering that he had denied his Lord three times. And that hurt. Remembering the guilt. The guilt. And Peter says, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Yesterday I saw a film about Babe Ruth. One of my favorite candy bars of all time. <laughs> and the thing about Babe Ruth is that he, he had a difficult childhood. And of course he became one of the most famous baseball play, players to ever play the game. And one day he visited a boy in the hospital who was sick. And he was trying to encourage the boy to get better. And he said, to encourage you to get better, the little boy's name was Johnny. He said, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> he said, Johnny, I will hit one home run for you tomorrow in the game to encourage you to get better. And the little boy, Johnny, was really weak, but he, he, he held up two fingers <laughs> to Babe Ruth. Two fingers. And Babe Ruth says to Johnny, you mean to tell me you want me to hit two home runs? And Johnny nods his head, right? Yes. And Babe Ruth says, well, Johnny, I, gee, I don't know. I don't know if I can hit two. He said, okay. I'll hit two. So then the next scene is, it's the bottom of the ninth, and Babe Ruth has hit one home run. Okay, And everybody knows about this promise to this little boy. Somehow it, it leaked, you know what I mean? Leaks happen, right? Somehow this leaked, so everybody knew about this promise to Johnny. So it's the bottom of the ninth. And they show Babe Ruth up to the plate, and then they show Johnny in his hospital bed with his fingers crossed. And I'm on the edge of my seat, right? I'm absolutely on the edge of my seat. And sure enough, Babe Ruth hits the second home run. And after he trots around the bases, he grabs the microphone, and he says, Johnny, that was for you! You get better now! You get better now, Johnny, that was for you! reminded me of something that happened in my own life. I was a young boy, and I was about to enter my first surgical procedure, the first one that I ever had. And the, the doctor needed me to sign a release form so that he could operate. So he said to me, he says, Carl, if you let me operate, you will walk in 10 days. You know what I said? Where do I sign? Where do I sign? So they handed me the release papers. I signed my name. And I was going to, as I was going to the operating room, you know the hymn I sang? True story. A mighty fortress is our God. Best of all. Vestiborg in German, right? I, on the way to the operating room, I sang A Mighty Fortress is Our God, the song we just sang. I was singing it all the way to the operating room. And when I woke up from the anesthesia, I was in a full body cast. A full body cast. But that was okay. And there was some pain, 
I was in some pain, right? But that was all right, because I knew in 10 days I was going to walk. So I started to count. One, two, three. I was still in the cast, but that was okay. I was only to three, three days. Still seven days to go. I was good. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Now I was starting to worry a little bit. Because I was at seven. I was still in the cast. I said, that's okay. We still got three days. Eight, nine, ten. Well, by the time I counted to ten, I was pretty angry. Pretty angry. And the doctor on the tenth day stuck his head in, in my room and said, Carl, are we still friends? Yeah. <laughs> are we still friends, Carl? And I'm glad he left before I could respond. <laughs> but it was worse than being mad at the doctor, see? It was worse than that. I was mad at God. See? I was mad at God. Oh, and I had, by the way, I had, I grew up in Baltimore, so I had Orioles players. Baltimore Orioles. Mm -hmm. This is when they were really good. <laughs> it's been a while since they've been really good. But the, the Orioles, the Orioles players would stop by my room and say, now you get better, Carl. You get better now. We're coming here to visit you so that you get better, okay? Promise, promise us that you'll get better. Of course, I would promise them because I didn't want to disappoint my heroes. But then after they left, I, I fell back into... Depression. And I said, God, where, where are you? What kind of a cruel God are you? <clears throat> and after I got out of the hospital, people wanted me to go to church, you know, to pray for me. And they wanted me to go to Bible study. I wanted none of it. <clears throat> But it's not like I had a choice. I was a pastor's kid, you know. So did I have a choice? No, I didn't have a choice. So I went to church and I went to Bible study. And it was there that I discovered that I had a Jesus who loved me. Just the way that I was. He, did you hear me? He loved me just the way that I was. And he understood pain. And he understood suffering. And he understood disappointment. Right? Because Judas betrayed him with a kiss. And his disciples deserted him when he needed him the most. And Peter denied him three, three times. So Jesus, I had a Jesus who understood disappointment. Who understood rejection. Who understood betrayal. Who understood death itself. You remember on the cross, Jesus said, my God, my God, why? I had a Jesus who asked the question, why? Just like I was asking. But the, the amazing thing about Jesus is even though he asked the question, why? He also said, into your hands, I commit my spirit. He still trusted God even though he had questions. And three days later, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. 